Okay, so you the artist, you the storyteller inside this, who ends up being an actor but starts off being a dancer. Yeah. Well, you could have been a hockey player too. Mm. How does that awareness that you're in the storytelling arts, whether yeah. you're dancing, whether yeah. you're writing, whether you've got a company, whether you're in a film, yeah. how does that learn to line up with the Michael that nobody leans into and says, hey, I have a little whatever blood in me. How does that start to line up with that guy? Because he couldn't have been alive in the, Nash in the, in the ballet school. That guy couldn't have appeared I, I, yet. I was, I, was, I was unaware. You were unaware. I mean, I was aware that I was a brown kid. Yep. But I was, the, the school was a blessed place in that that really didn't matter. What didn't matter was that I wasn't strong enough. I wasn't fast enough. I wasn't X enough, you know. Um, I didn't really become aware of when I was back home in Saskatchewan, it was in my face every day. So being in Toronto, such a you know beautifully diverse place, I, I, it was a, I grew up without the same kind of daily um, uh, whack in the face of it that uh, all my relatives deal with in Saskatchewan. Um, so I was privileged by being in Toronto. And I'd be reminded of it when I went home. So, but I didn't become politicized by it until I was like a teenager. And I listened to punk music, and I loved that. And I was like, yeah, that, that, that expresses something to me. And then I got into reggae, and I was like, oh, that's, that's even better. And then I became simply more and more like awake. And then I looked at the powdered wigs and the buckled shoes <laughs> <laughs> and the dances with scythes. And I'm like, what is this? This is nuts. <laughs> and the audience loved it. <laughs> 